Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 battle series. We are here, it is Thursday, and we are nearly at the end of the week and we are nearly at the point where we're going to say goodbye to this Eveldon build that we've played for what nearly is two weeks now. We had a little bit of a break in between, but I hope you've been enjoying it guys. And like I said in our previous episode, what we're going to do in today's episode is have a little bit of a more fun take on this restricted combination. And as you can see on your screen right now, we've got a little bit more of a fun take. We've got the Eveldo we got Gengar, which is going to be the mega of the team. we got Groudon, going to be the other restricted combination between that Eveltal and the Groudon. Then we got him on top. We're keeping that there. We've put the eject button on it now. We've got Stack Attacker in. It gives us a little bit of a better option against Xerneas for sure. And then we've got little old Jumpluff. Now, we did face a Jumpluff in yesterday's episode, and I did say when we bumped into it, it was something I'd been trying out with this core and something that I would like to bring onto the channel. So here we are. As always, though, guys, the team is down in the description below there is a roll pace and a poker pace try it out test it up it might inspire some ideas but at the very least it'll give you some nice funsies to have on the battle spot with because we've got one of the things that i do like about this team is the encore disable combination we've got between the jump Luff and the mega gengar so we see that commonly used on whimsicott and um, with gengar but we can also utilize it in this team. You know, the jump left gives us another fly, a ground immunity with that flying type along with the Veltal. So we've got some weaknesses to ground here, but we've got ways around it. We've got wide guard still on the Hitmon top. I've actually put skill swap on the stack attacker because I think getting into a position with Groudon under Trick Room where we can skill swap the Beast Boost onto the Groudon after a Sword Stance and then start decimating things with those Precipice Blades, it can really start to snowball things from there. So it'll be interesting to see how the team performs i'm really excited to actually give it a go because things like jump luff and stuff like that are a lot more fun to play around with and just a bit more entertaining so i really do hope you guys enjoy the episode today so without further ado let's get into it and as always if you do enjoy this sort of content guys please make sure to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more pokemon content and leave your comments down below let me know what you think of the team here today um as we are creeping back towards that 1700 rating i think we'll kick off with league title defense for today's episode and uh, well, hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent but I think it's not going to be like straightforward using this it might take a little bit of time to get used to but we are just featuring it today it's just a little bit of fun before we say goodbye to the Valdon core as I say and uh, do keep the suggestions coming in for teams that you would like to see played next week I did put a poll up on the YouTube channel on Tuesday so check that out Get your votes in, say, just comment what you would like to see, and uh, we'll make sure to try and feature it either next week or the following week after that. But we have a first opponent to kick us off today. I'm going to go up against Sky, and we'll jump straight into Team Preview. So Sky is our first opponent, and playing a team of Bishop, Groudon, Lilligant, Salamence, Tabu Coco, and Xerneas. So we've got two Chlorophyll users on both sides of the field here. I think our jump luff is a little bit faster, so maybe makes it a little bit better. Who knows? Um, I do really feel like leading jump luff isn't a bad option here. Got to be a little bit careful about the hit on top, especially because of that defiant ability on the, the Bishop. It will boost its attack rather than lower it. Um, and... Hmm, let's see what we can do. Uh, the Gengar's got to be a bit careful. But once the Bishop kind of is out of the way, the Gengar doesn't do too bad a job, uh, if I'm if I'm totally honest. And one thing we could potentially do is lead um, Gengar with the Jump Luff, but I'm more inclined to lead Groudon with the Jump Luff here. Uh, and then we'll have access to the Sleep Power and stuff like that. We've just got to be a bit careful around the Tapu Koko that can kind of hinder our ability to utilize that. Um, right, stack attack is going to be very good, especially against the Xerneas, the, the Salamence. We've just got to be a bit careful around that Groudon um, because of the Precipice Blades that it can potentially throw out at us. And maybe him on top isn't too bad to bring here and probably bench Gengar in this one. Although Gengar could be potentially good, I'm probably going to be more inclined to go with the him on top here. So we'll get into it, we'll see how we get on. Sad I'm not bringing the Gengar in the first match. Gengar is one of those Pokemon I haven't really featured so much on the channel this year um, in the Ultra series and it's definitely a Pokemon I have a big a lot of love for and it's something I do want to feature at some point so it's maybe something you guys want to see. Maybe next week we do feature it and it'll all come down to what you guys decide um, but we are going to see my opponent lead off with the uh, the Tapu Koko and the Groudon. Um, so we are going to get the sun up. Um, you know, we've got a pretty easy option here where we can just 
just double protect turn 1 because we do have that fast on call that we can utilize going into turn 2 if my opponent locks into something like sword stance or protect with their ground on then it puts us in a way better position going into the following turn we could also switch in um, our hit on top as well for our ground on just preserve that or we could switch jump up out to him on top as well uh, the next turn so we've got the fake out to utilize there's lots of options here um i think double protecting isn't a bad idea then we lock potentially the cocoa into something going into the next turn we can't really utilize sleep powder at the minute we've got the sap strength that we could utilize um on the opposing ground on so we can kind of neuter it that way I'm just gonna. I am just double protecting here. So we're gonna see the Groudon switch out. We're gonna see Salamence hit the field. Isn't the worst. Isn't the best. Uh, we do get intimidated, but we'll see what this Coco goes for. Maybe a Volt switch out onto our Jump Pluff here. And maybe it's a bit passive from ourselves this first turn, but I mean, yeah, there's a Volt switch. It's just into our Jump Pluff. Okay, Jump Luff isn't in the best of positions right now, but I mean, at the same time, well, the Salamence is is causing us a few issues, for sure. Uh, what could we do? What could we do? What could we do? We could put the Salamence to sleep, for sure, um, and we could Sword Stance, because um, the Salamence isn't on the ground, so it is prone to being put to sleep, um, or we could just press with Blades. Kind of more inclined to just sword stance here, to be honest, though, and just sleep out of the Salamence. We'll probably take, we will probably take a Volt Switch from the Coco, but we are sashed, so we're not too worried about that. It's just um, making sure our little jump plug has his goggles on, which I'm sure we give him a talking to before this to make sure he does. It's a sleep powder. Jump Luff, you are the worst Pokemon. Venus always hits his sleep powders. How? What? What's that about? Lilligan coming in now. Excellent. <laughs> There's a tailwind. Okay. I mean, we kind of get away with it a little bit. The um, it's not ideal. Uh, we might need to keep jump for later on. At least we didn't lose it. Um, so we'll protect Groudon, and we will bring in. Do we bring in stacks and try and get a trick room up? It's probably not a bad idea. Um, I don't see the Lilligan going for <laughs> grass type attack into the jump bluff, and I probably see something like Hyper Voice come out from the Salamence of or anything else at this point. Um, and if we can get a trick room up, we're going to be in a way better position going into the the next few turns, especially with my opponent going for more of a. Um, mm. There we go. There's the Encore and a Hyper Voice. Eek! That's not so good. Okay, but I mean, Stack Attack doesn't mind that too much. I don't know what my opponent can do to really stop our Trick Room here. Um, they can definitely Encore our Groudon, which we we don't really want to get into the trap of, to be honest. And I'd rather bring in Jump Luff, Sack it, and get a Trick Room up. And then keep Groudon in. Um, and get locked into Encore, we went pretty useless. So I will do that. Hopefully, like the best case scenario here is we bring in Jump Pluff, it goes down to a hyper voice, and then we get a trick room up. Poor little Jump Pluff taking all the brunt of everything. What is this? It's a Bloom Doom from the Lilligant. So maybe Hip on Top would have been, well, no. No, it wouldn't have been better. It wouldn't have been better at all. I think we take this though, like, it's going to do a chunk of damage, but I'm not worried about getting knocked out. Man, it does way more than what I thought. Dragon Pulse, that's not good. Ah, oh, but we actually take it, so that's that. That's good. I thought we might, <laughs> might actually go down to that, which would have been literally the worst. We do change the dimensions now. I don't think we're going to be able to take the Lilligan down, um, unfortunately. And we can't encore it right this minute. Um, but could we get Groudon in? 
skill swap the Groudon. We will lose our son, for sure, but we will get the beast boost. Is it even going to be worth it, or is it better just going for a Gyro Ball and a Sleep Powder? A Sleep Powder into the Salamence and a Gyro Ball, and then just sacking. And sacking the Stack Attacker at this point, and just getting some damage onto this Lilligant. The other option is switching in the Groudon to get the Chlorophyll boost onto the Lilligant, so the Gyro Ball does more damage. But, we actually get it anyway, so that is just how good Stax is. Defense Ross, Sleep Powder. Jump Love pulling through. There we go. There we go. You're not all that bad, Jump Love. We love you. We love you, really. Okay, so we put the Salamence to sleep. Now, now the Groudon comes back in. But now there's no electric terrain. But the Groudon probably comes in. And the Tapu Koko switches for the Salamence. That would be my best guess. But maybe it's a good time to wide guard and get our own ground on him. And do this. Let's do this. Um Cause I think if the, the, the opposing ground on doesn't go for a precipice blade, it goes probably fire punch into jump left, which our ground on I'll take pretty comfortably. Okay, so Grad, I'm going to just protect here. Salamence wakes up and protects. Okay. Now we reveal the wide guard. Okay, so my opponent's. I don't think my opponent goes for. I don't think my opponent goes for. Um, I'm going to sword stance and bring in him on top. Because I just don't. I just don't see them going for Precipice Blades this next turn, because we've revealed it. Unless they completely call our bluff, and then we deserve <laughs> getting B-bladed. But they might be a special ground one as well, you know, they might have Earth Power, so that's something else we can't discount, but I'm, I'm banking on them being physical. Banking on stuff in Pokemon's never always the best idea, but we get the hit on top in. We've got gonna have the fake out the next turn. We get the sword stance up with our ground on. Put ourselves into a really nice position going into this next turn, especially with our trick room up. Uh, sword stance from the opposing ground on, and we're gonna see the Salamence go for Dragon Pulse into ah hit on top. Brilliant, perfect, perfect. That's fine. That's fine. Um, because we get our eject button, we'll get out of here. We'll get because um, our trick room's going to end soon. I think that's one of the things that we've got to we've got to remember that our trick room will end pretty soon. Um, do we get jump Luff in now? Protect, protect, and then we can put the ground on to sleep. Although the coco well, it baits the coco in then, doesn't it? Um, do we get stacks in? I think stack is probably better because then we can we can pressure the salamence with the gyro ball. And Precipice Blades at the same time. Because how many turns of Trick Room we got? One. Okay. I'm going to Precipice Blades just to cover this ground on. And there's a part of me that wants to just Wide Guard. But. Hmm. I'm going to Gyro Ball the Salamence. I think the ground on protects here. We could see a double protect, sure, and then it made more sense for us to switch in a, a jump luff here for our stack attacker, but I just want to try and get this mince, and I just don't, yeah, the, yeah. I think the, the mince attacks the stack attacker here, and this opens the door for our jump luff to come back in. Okay. This is still fine, though, because my opponent can't go for... Like, they've got to attack. Like, we can Wide Guard now and get rid of the Groudon. This is, like, this is super fine. Um, so, yeah, we just press his Blades and we just Wide Guard. We have revealed it, and I think my opponent has to play on that. Like, but we don't want to risk not Wide Guarding here because I don't think my opponent's. Like, they could have something Tantrum, for sure. 
But yeah, it, it doesn't look like they do. And the Coco coming in, we'll be able to get rid of the Coco. And then when Jump Love comes back onto the field, we can we can totally threaten that Salamence. Now we probably lose Stack Attacker here. Wow. Okay. They actually went Hyper Voice. Hit. Okay, we're, and we're back in that kind of same situation now, I feel. Um, although, the Salamence is in a bit of a better position to... Uh, like, the Groudon comes in, it probably protects the Salamence, attacks into the Stack Attacker, for sure. One thing we could potentially do is just switch into um, our Hitmontop. Um... And then we've got the fake out the next turn, which would then allow us to fake out Groud on Precipice Blades if it does protect here. And if not. Or do we just wide guard and just yeah, and then we get we get top in anyway. I think that's probably a better idea. Like we precipice blades and wide guard, just in case my opponent decides to get really cheeky and go for a sword dance with their Groud on. Expecting us to think that they are gonna protect. And I don't want to allow that to happen. So we'll wide guard. We'll just spam it. The Salamence has to attack into the stack attacker. Yeah, with Dragon Pulse. Which will take us down now. But Stax has done so much work in this game. Really makes me appreciate the stack attacker. And interestingly, no protect from the Groudon here. It does go for the Sword Stand. So this is what I mean. Like, if we not attacked into it this turn or protected or done something else, then we're getting punished here. So Precipice Blades. It does hit. And this should take it down. And then we've only got, yeah, we've only got the Salamence to deal with now. And then we can bring in Jump Love. We can Sleep Powder it, Fire Punch, and it's all, all, all good. All good. And we still got him on top in the back. So we are able to eke a win out of this one. It's not over yet, of course, but it's pretty much as good as over, I would say. So we'll just Fire Punch the Salamence. We'll go for that Sleep Powder. And Jump Love, after it was so, so underwhelming and missing that first turn where we used it. It's coming back, doing all the work now for us. Um, although, it Sleep Powder's on strong. Salmon's only had like a one turn sleep the previous turn. So hopefully we can have a little bit longer than that this this next turn. Because, uh, we, yeah, we're going to need one more Fire Punch. But I think it's all sealed up, isn't it? So then we'll go for the Fire Punch. And I think what we'll do is go for Sap Strength. Because we haven't seen it, we should all get all our health back now. And we should obtain our Ash back, lower our Salamence's attack. And this is why it's really good against something like uh, Rayquaza. Because Rayquaza's got such a sky-high um, attack stat. Uh, we can kind of intimidate it and get our Sash back by just doing that as long as the sun's up. So it's really nice way of, of dealing with it. Um, but we do take it down with the Fire Punch and Sap Strength. We get to use it, we get to use all the tech, so really good game for us, good game to my opponent Sky, and uh, a nice way for us to kick off with this weird team today. <laughs> I'm going to say weird team, because I don't think the edges have been that refined with it, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, I did originally have Tapu Lele in the build as well, but I feel like we need some sort of fake out, and you know, I was this close to put an Incineroar into the team over the hit on top but I kind of retracted and thought you know what Gengar Mega Gengar one of the things I love about Mega Gengar is it's so fast it's so offensive and I think We'll change screen, here we are. Um, yeah, it's so fast and so offensive. I, I always feel like it's one of those Pokemon because it can't be faked out because of its ghost typing that it really thrives on helping hand support and that's kind of why I've got the Hitmon top here over anything else. But we've got our next opponent of the episode so we will jump straight into it, into team preview. My friends. So our next opponent, Barber, is running a team. It looks a great team actually. Great props to Barber here running the Kyogre, the Xerneas, which is the restricted combination, the Reindeer here. We've got Mega B Drill, which I've not seen on the channel yet so far this season. Or I don't think we have. Uh, so very exciting to play that and see that in today's episode. The Tapu Lele, we've got the Amoongus there. It's a Trick Room check and probably something against opposing Xerneas support. It's on Xerneas and Kyogre. And then the Alolan Persian going to be the fast fake out of the team for my opponent to utilize here. Now the Persian and the Tapu Lele. I would imagine the Tapu Lele is scarfed. So the Persian and the Lele do put a lot of pressure onto our Gengar. So... 
I'm a little bit put off bringing that to start with. I mean, Stack Attacker with the safety goggles has such a good time here. If we can just dictate the weather um, on our side of the field, then Stack Attacker is having a great time, um, especially against things like Xerneas, the B Drill. Uh, B Drill, we have to watch out for Drill Run, of course, um, but the Tapu Lele and the Persian, we kind of just do do a lot of work to. So Trick Room here, definitely good for us. Um, though we do need to be a bit careful around that Amoongus for sure. Right, what are we going to do? We've not got long left. Um, let's go. Let's go. Jumpluff, Stacker, Groudon, and Eveltal. Let's lock in. I don't even... I don't even know if that's like the right call. I've just clicked buttons. I saw the timer was on like 10 seconds and we've just locked in. But whatever happens, it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to have a good time in this battle. And like I said at the start of the week, this is an easy week. <laughs> you guys have been amazing. And let me adjust back to life and get some content out before we hit it hard next week. Come back with a bang. So I'm going to see my opponent lead off with the Xerneas and the Tabulele. So not a bad lead for us, to be honest. Um... One of the things I really like with the Encore on Jump Luff is you can get the, if you get the Sun up with your Jump Luff, uh, you can still Encore Xerneas into uh, the Geomancy. Um, now, what are we going to do? I think I'm just going to sleep out of the Xerneas and I'm just going to Gyro Ball. Oh, do a Trick Room. Do a Trick Room. Do a Trick Room when we've got the opportunity to. Tapu Lele could taunt us for sure. like it could just gyro ball. What's my opponent going to do? Switch in. They've not got many switch ins for it and I would expect maybe a Moongus to hit the field now which would make sense. Uh, I'm just going to gyro ball the Lele. If we can get rid of that it makes things a bit easier. Uh, we're just going to say it's staying and uh, as long as our sleep powder hits the, um, the Xenius which it does because Jumpluff is back on form. Um, we put the Xenius to sleep and we are going to be able to pick up the knockout onto this Lele with our, with our stack. The stacker is just a beast. It's like one of those Pokemon that I just, I really do appreciate, but I never use enough. And every time I do use it, I just rediscover this love that I've got for it and just how good it is. It's just incredibly strong. Um, but we're setting ourselves up to be in a nice position now. Let's see what my opponent brings in. Maybe the Kyogre to get rid of the stacker. But if the Kyogre comes in, then we've got the switch into our Groudon. And I know I, I talk a lot through these turns, guys, but I think in a, in a format like this it's so important to just just to ensure that you are kind of trying to stay a little bit ahead of the game the whole time now the big drills coming in now what does that mean for us um well if we had rage powder it would be amazing on uh, jump Pluff. the drill run probably does threaten our stack attacker quite heavily um do i want to try and put the b drill to sleep sure I do, um, but I can't protect. I can't protect Stacker, um, but I can bring in Eveltal. Um, we've got to rely on this this Xerneas staying asleep for a turn. Um, I'm going to bring in Eveltal. I think, like, even if, because I feel like the B Drill attacks the Stack Attacker here. I think that's the biggest threat to my opponent's team for sure. I don't want to bring in Groudon just yet because the the Kyogre's in the back, and if I bring the Groudon, we'll take a Drill Run anyway. Um, but we are going to see the, the Beedrill Mega Roll. And if we can put this thing to sleep, it makes things so much easier for us going into these next few turns at least. Because then we can get Stacker onto the field. Oh, we're just going to see a U turn. It's going to be into the Jump Luff. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder if it does have. Now we're going to see Kyogre come in. But I don't mind losing Jump Luff because now we get Groudon in. Now we switch out Veltal into Stack Attacker. And then we get a Trick Room up. Uh, it's whether or not the Xerneas is asleep now. If it wakes up and gets the Geomancy off, it makes things a little bit more difficult for us. But I believe in Jump Luffs. I believe in Jump Luffs strong sleep powders. I think we're going to get at least one turn out of this Xerneas. That's yeah, it's the weakest, the weakest of all <laughs> sleep powders. So weak. And we, we I mean, Veltal does stick around. Um, I think what we'll do is bring in Stack Attacker. We'll get the Trick Room up and we'll switch Groudon in. It's better than bringing Groudon in than trying to switch Stacker in. Yeah. At least this way it's a bit more fluid. So we will just... Um, do I even care about losing Veltal now? Because we've got max speed Veltal, we could just Z-move the Kyogre. Uh, it's just... 
It's too risky. It's too risky because if we if we lose the speed tire with Xerneas, it takes the Veltal down, then we'll take a water spout from this Kyogre, which is never going to be good. So we're better off just bringing our Groudon in and um, making use of it that way. Now, I think once we've got the Trick Room up, even if my opponent starts switching around, I think we're in such a strong position with Stack Attacker and Groudon that we're, we're going to be fine, especially with that skill swap. And I think that's what kind of slightly sways the matchup a little bit for us. So we'll see what my opponent decides to do now. Uh, we know it's a beat drill in the back, and if we get the trick room, which we're likely to do now, I just don't see what my opponent can really do to kind of come back in this match. So here's Big Bad Groudon coming onto the field, activating its primal reversion uh, and activating that desolate land ability. So we are going to see this desolate land activate, overwrite the um, primordial sea. Geomancy, he's going for it. I mean, the, the Xerneas is going for it now, so fair play. We'll probably see an Origin Pulse or a Water Spout, I imagine, from the Kyogre. But the Xerneas is easier to deal with, I think, like than the Kyogre, to be honest. Um, oh, that's a nice play. That's a nice play. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. But it doesn't really help my opponent uh, too much. Because um, we're just Jarrah Ball. And Precipice Bleeds. I mean, we could Sword Stance here, but I, I don't know if there's really that much need to, to be honest. Kyogre probably switches out to Beedrill. Um, I think we just, the, the next turn, we can Jarrah Ball the Xerneas again in Precipice Blades, or we can Fire Punch and Skill Swap the Beedrill, expecting the Kyogre to come onto the field. There's, there's a lot of options that we can do. Um, I really wanted to get the Groudon with the skill swap here, just to kind of snowball these um, these beast boosts, if we could do that, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to. I don't know if we're gonna be able to. I mean, this is probably a good a good opportunity for us to do that here. Xenius does protect. Um, and I think my opponent's like in a position where they, they kind of ha either have to get rid of their Geomancy boost this next turn, um, or See, that's the annoying thing. That is the annoying thing. I think I'm gonna skill swap the Groudon. And I'm gonna... I feel like you switch the Xerneas out and try... But do you just... I don't know, I just... Really just, I don't know. I don't know what you do here. But it's like I want to, like a drill run, is what I expect from the B drill here, and the Kyogre switch in on the Zonia slot. But do you do that? Do you really do that and sacrifice your Geomancy boosts? I don't know if you do. I could just gyro ball and just fire punch the B drill. I'm gonna kick myself if this is the Kyogre. Yeah, it goes. It goes out. We should have skill swapped. Oh, it's all. It's all gone. Pete Tong. Should have skill swapped and fire punched. We had it locked in. We were like, Nelly, okay, we're going to get away with it. We're going to get away with it. We are going to get away with it. And the gyro ball. But now it's fine. Now it is fine. Because my opponent feels like they're in a really comfortable position now. And they're not. They're not at all. Because now we do skill swap. And how many turns of trick room we got left too? So we're in, we're in decent shape. Because now we just skill swap, fire punch the B drill. Get rid of that threat. I think you would be better off if you were my opponent attacking with the B drill there. I can understand why you probably protect to preserve your resources so you've got options to switch around a little bit better. Um, but my opponent's definitely throwing out a water type attack now. 100%. Unless they are just like Jedi level prediction skills. Which they might be. You never know. You never know on these situations, but at least we're going to see the skill swap. We bottled it turn one. We bottled it. Big style, didn't we? We bottled it. But we are going to be able to do this now. Okay. Right, Xenia's coming back out onto the field. And like, Fire Punch is going to be a two hit KO, at least onto the Xenia. So you've got to expect it should be, unless it's like super bulky. Um, but the Kyogre's definitely in a position now where it wants to. Um... <coughs> Uh, 
We've got to be careful though, I think, because the trick room ending the next turn is where we can get a little bit hung up. Um, now I'd expect the Kyogre to switch out, and this is where I think I need to go Fire Punch into the Kyogre. No, and I've locked into the Xerneas, but if the Xerneas... Ah, this is the worst. Ah, I've misclicked. Ah, Fire Punch into the Kyogre slot to catch the B drill. That's what we needed to do. Because the Xerneas protects here, and now Jarable Fire Punch goes into that slot. I mean, if the Xerneas doesn't protect here, then... Bad. It's not so bad. We still got wide guard as well. We can okay. So I'm gonna get the Xerneas. I mean, I feel like my opponent by making that play is kind of given up a little bit now. Uh, Fire punch gone into the Kyogre. I'm not gonna do too much damage. Enough though. I'm picking up the burn just for good measure. Ice beam into Growlon. Yeah. And the trick room does end for the um, the B drill to come back in. It's got drill run for sure. It's definitely got drill run. One hundred percent. Hmm. I'm gonna gyro ball the B drill, and I'm gonna just protect Groudon here, and I hope you target down the Groudon, and forget that the fact that the, the stack attack has got the desolate land. Oh, goes you turn. Okay. I don't think it's got drill run then. There's the ice beam. Okay, it's into stacks. And the gyro ball, I would imagine, is going to be enough to get the, the B drill. It's got to be enough. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, we're going to be able to close this one out. we got a Veltal in the back to come in and close this one up. And we take two wins. It was very close today, guys. It's very, very close. A lot closer than I would have liked it to have been. Uh, we'll trick room. No, we won't trick room. We got a Veltal in the back. We've got to think about this logically. Uh, we'll go Gyro Ball. And we will go Precipice Blades. And we should be able to lock this one up today. Very good. Um, there's another Ice Beam coming out into the Groudon, I'd imagine. Yeah. Oh, we'll take this because we're nice and bulky. Precipice Blades does actually hit. Very good Groudon. And picks up the knockout. So, very good game to my opponent. Nice to see B Drill and uh, Stack Attacker again doing all the work in this episode. So, guys, that is going to be it for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've had a little bit of a variation with the team, but I am holding off now, waiting on your response. Let me know what you'd like to see with Eveltal Groudon. What Pokemon you would like to see? I mean, if you'd like to see some more games with this team, let me know. We can totally just do that but if you've got specific pokemon you think that would work really well with the Vel veldon or Velto or groudon then let me know and we will make sure to feature it tomorrow before we say goodbye to the restricted combination but thank you so much for tuning in guys i hope you've had a great time i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all for the next one very soon so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye